should you network after you find a job. Dr. Tracy Weiland is a prominent thought leader on the impact of technology on society, on work, on careers, a scholar at Stanford University and in leadership positions in some of the nation's, the world's great companies, Apple, HP, Cisco. Her book, Employed for Life, 21st Century Career Trends, and she advises us on careers. Dr. Tracy Weiland, good morning. Welcome back to Morning Air. Oh, good morning, John and Glenn. I think we've all been there. You get to that job that you've wanted, you've really campaigned for, you've worked hard to get to that next level, and you think, ah, I've made it. Is that a fatal flaw in our thinking? Um, yes, because you know we're all going to probably have eight to ten jobs in our lifetime, and I think it's a natural human characteristic that when you get a job, you're relieved, and you stop, and you just focus on the new job, and you hope that you never have to face that job hunt again. But in reality, you probably will. It may not be immediately, but it may, may come at some point in your career again. How many jobs do you get through networking? Mm -hmm. Have you ever focused on that? Is there an actual number? Yeah, most recruiters will set, tell you that 65 to 75% of all jobs are uh, secured through networking. And, and really the logic is it's that people hire people. And so, um, you know, now we have more technology means to meet people, but at the end of the day, people are the ones who are hiring other people. And networking is pretty important. Networking is a little bit easier these days, at least through a LinkedIn on the web. We've talked about LinkedIn. Changed, I'm on LinkedIn um, only because it just showed up one day years ago and I did a profile. I changed my uh, password the other day because I couldn't get in. And all of a sudden this cascade of email came in saying, oh, so glad to see you on LinkedIn. Uh, and that's just something that's never been on my radar. But is that a good found? If you don't have LinkedIn, then you're not networking. You're not really in, in, the, in the job market. You're really not showing everybody what you're doing. Well, LinkedIn is a great networking digital tool. You know, it's almost like the online Rolodex. Um, it's a way that you can post a profile. Uh, you can reach out to contacts in the business community um, and let them know that you're available. And a lot of recruiters do go to LinkedIn to look for people to fill their open positions. They go to other places as well, but LinkedIn, you know, was really had positioned itself as the key tool for people looking for jobs and recruiters to find people looking for jobs. Dr. Tracy, how do you network without becoming a pest? Yeah, you know, when you have a new job, you're given a grace period, really. It's the first three months. Some people call it the first 100 days. And I think that's important if you are in a new job to use that time wisely to network and basically set up a series of inter informational interviews with everyone on your team, people who your management suggests that you meet so that you can learn about your new job, the company, and how to get things done. And at the same time, you'll be networking and meeting potential opportunities for future moves. So I kind of call it as you set up informational interviews, which can be 20-minute phone calls or a quick cup of coffee, and ask people about themselves and what they do and how to fit into the company. And I think that's a good way to, to start networking when you're joining a new company and you don't want to appear to be a climber. And also in appearing to be a climber, you can also come off as always looking for a job and get painted as the person who's just never happy with what he or she has. How do I avoid that pitfall? Yeah, I think part of it is always trying to put yourself in the role of your management and the firm. You know, how can I add value to the firm? How can I add value to my team? How can I add value to my group? And asking questions to say, you know, I want to add value to the firm and make sure that I'm doing a good job. What do you suggest? Are there people that I should meet to help me get the job done well here in the company? I think that's the way you can position yourself, not to be like looking for a new job or who do I need to meet or who's on top. Um, right. it's more of you know positioning around the company and value. And to follow up to the point that you just made, Dr. Tracy, networking within your own company, if it is a large enough company, how do you network in your own company without looking like you're an opportunist? opportunist? Yeah, so, you know, the safest way is to ask your manager. <laughs> you know, here I am, I'm brand new to the company. Do you have a list of 20 people that you think is critical for me to make sure that I meet and get to know so that I do a good job? Really? Isn't that kind of bold to ask? I, I oh, suppose it to be. No? No, because managers, managers want to look good, and they want to make sure that they look good, that they hired the right person. 
So if you approach them and say, I'm doing this so that I am successful and productive as quickly as possible, there's probably going to be key people who, because you've got to remember jobs today are about teams. Um, you know, how are we going to make sure that I'm successful while I'm here? And so managers will usually give you a list of people and saying, well, you should probably get to know your own people in the organization. Here's a couple of other key people outside of the organization that is important to get, make sure you get along with, and they can help pave the way for you. Um, I also encourage people that they get to know if you're working a lot with key customers or vendors, believe it or not, they're the primary people who actually hire people out of firms. And so, again, if, as long as in the context of doing a good job, there is a way that you can start to get to know people both inside and outside the firm. Dr. Tracy, do we sometimes make networking seem too complicated? Isn't it sort of a matter of common sense in, in paying attention and just, you know, communicating and being friendly with those we bump into? Uh, yes, exactly. I, I think it's, you know, the companies today are all about making sure that you get along with everyone, uh, work well on teams, and a part of that is just common sense. Uh, if you meet someone in the lunchroom, uh, you get to know them and say hi, you know, and you have your elevator pitch. We've talked about that before, letting them know who you are, you're brand new to the company, this is my role, and asking them, oh, by the way, what do you do? And then, you know, when someone sees your face, and then they'll remember, oh, that's the new person, and they say hi to you. Um, and you'll always remember people who listen to you and ask you for advice. How do you use social media as a networking tool, Dr. Tracy? So, you know, when you do, I always encourage people, you know, LinkedIn is great, but you don't have to tell the world that you've changed your job on day one. But give it a week. <laughs> no one's waiting to find out, your, you know, your next move. Um, just in case things don't work out, you know, so I give it a week or two and then update your profile. That automatically actually triggers everyone in your network that you have a new job. So that's, <clears throat> excuse me, a pretty easy way. Number two is, you know, if you synchronize, so I say be careful with your Facebook and Twitter. If you have a professional profile on Facebook and Twitter, then you can use those profiles. If it is a friends and family profile, and then, then you can just alert the friends and family that you've gotten a new job and you're very excited about it, and you can learn more about it by going to the corporate website or the you know, LinkedIn page or something like that. Um, I think it's good to just keep up with people, uh, you know, letting them know. A lot of times you'll get notices that people got a new job or it's their birthday or there's a significant milestone, and you can congratulate them and let them know at the same time that you've also made a job move and then they'll probably take a look at your profile as well. Those are just easy ways to get to know people. Let Dr. Know. Tracy, if, I, if I'm good at doing my job, will those in charge find me because I'm doing my job very well, or do I still have to network? I think you have to network, and I think you have to make sure that if you're doing a good job that people know, so I encourage people to track their metrics. You know, write down one metric every day of what you've accomplished, whether it's increasing sales or reducing costs or securing a new customer and then have one-on-one -on -one with your managers to let them know what you've achieved. A lot of times managers are just too busy and they don't notice, so it's really up to you to create your own visibility. Wow, a lot of food for thought there and a blueprint for success from Dr. Tracy Weiland on why it's important to network even after you've found that job to let them know that uh, you're there and doing a good job and some practical ways to use social media as well and also a lot of practicality and how to do that without looking like I'm always looking for a job. Dr. Tracy Weiland, always great actionable information. Thank you so much, doctor. Thank you. TracyWeiland.com on the World Wide Web, TracyWeiland.com. Check her out online and just tap into that expertise and expertise that uh, she has used with Apple and HP and Cisco and some of the world's biggest corporations and uh, part of our success team here on Morning Air on Relevant.